Welcome to Dr. Roger and Friends, the bright side of longevity, hosted by three peas in a podcast, Doc Roger, Teresa, and Danielle. Thanks for joining us for Coffee and Conversation. Well, whew, we've done 10 episodes, right, on longevity. We kind of wanted it to be a guide to a well-lived and a long life, you know. But, you know, there are a lot of people who just want to turn to the last page of a novel, you know, just give me the uh, the crib notes we used to say in college, remember, that of, of something. So maybe we should sort of go through the 10 episodes and maybe just – Give them the big takeaway, the big tip. Just summarize it. What do you think? You want to do that? Works for me. Let's do it. Well, I'll start. You know, that first one was was all about longevity. The fact that we are going to live longer. All the research says we're going to live longer. But there's no guarantee that that longer life is going to be a quality life. And, but we know from the research that if we pay attention to lifestyle, because that's the major driver, and holistically, you know, all the aspects of it, all the components of a lifestyle, physical, mental, social, spiritual, that uh, we can have control of that so that it's a longer road and we don't have to be a victim and we don't have to be zealots. We don't have to eat bark and run marathons and do things like that, but we can have a well-lived long life because it's really up to us in our lifestyle. That was, that was the major takeaway from that one. That's, that's big. I mean, it's, that's a real beginning. So takeaway one is plan for the long haul, right? Yes. Act for the long haul too. That sounds good. (laughs) Pay attention to your lifestyle. So my takeaway, takeaway number two, age like pond scum. There's a difference between lifespan, a long life and health span, a healthy life. Aim for the latter. Science tells us that genes are not our destiny, and much of how we age is up to us. Studies examining telomeres in pond scum showed us that we can influence our gene expression through lifestyle choices and even how we think about our health. So these lifestyle choices include reducing stress, exploring purposeful pursuits, maintaining a positive attitude, and having strong social connections. Age like pond scum. Hey, 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 good pond scum. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> Tip number three, where you live matters. Our environment really, truly matters. It's, it includes the people in our lives, our, you know, our physical environment, our support structure. All of those impact the choices we make, and dramatically so. They shape our future for better or worse. And another kind of environment that profoundly impacts our lives is our internal environment, meaning the 60,000 thoughts that we think every single day. So here's the tip. Take an inventory of your external and internal environment. Ask yourself, are the people and things in your environment supporting or sabotaging the person that you want to become? What results have your thoughts produced in your life so far? It may be time to clean up your environment, and that can be countercultural, but it's entirely possible and absolutely necessary to become that next version of yourself. 60,000 thoughts, really? We're driving ourselves crazy. Yeah, so I like, <laughs> I like that one. So the takeaway, audit your environment internally and externally. So the next one were for those, all those people saying, yeah, 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 yeah. I know it's lifestyle, but that requires change. And I've never been successful. And this was about one small step for you. You sort of, you be the Neil Armstrong of your life, you know? And so this was about very, very robust research on what is, what is the takeaway on being successful at change, particularly in lifestyle. And it's, it's pretty simple. It's small steps. You know, Dr. Robert Moore wrote the book, One Small Step Can Save Your Life. So you can check that out. But basically the message is we are wired in our brains to fail when we undertake large change or we are presented with large change. But when we take small steps and make that the goal, not the big goal, a small step, that's your goal. That's what you focus on. That's what you're trying to achieve. That goes under the radar of this brain response that that really makes us fail. 
and we can achieve it. And we can develop the confidence and competence that we can indeed change. And if we're patient, we keep chipping away at it, going in the right direction. And this is the kind of change that's durable. You know, you can make a diet change and just eat broccoli or whatever, but you're not going to do that for the rest of your life. So these are changes that, that become part of your life and make it very easy. One small step for change. And tip number five, transform technology from foe to friend. In so many ways, technology really supports our health and well-being. You know, from meetup groups to the fitness trackers, Coursera, apps like All Trails and Calm, using Uber and Lyft, there's so many opportunities to meet new people and have new experiences and learn and grow. But of course, there's a dark side. And interestingly, technology can prevent those very things I just listed, um, keeping us sedentary and plugged in, yet so disconnected with what matters most and keeping us lonely. Billions of us are addicted to screens, and I think we're missing out on life. You know, Americans spend about five hours a day on their phones. So it's important to make technology work for us. Ask yourself, here's the tip. Is it facilitating health and longevity, or is it doing the very opposite in your life? If we make sure technology is working for us, we can absolutely set ourselves up to live not only longer, but better. Make technology your friend, not your foe. I like that one. So my tip number six, find what brings you purpose and peace. So spirituality is unique for each person, but the key ingredients generally include feelings of peace, a sense of purpose, and a deep connection to others in the world. So seek to discover what spirituality means to you. For some, this may mean religion. For others, it may be spending time in nature or volunteering for a cause you care about. Or it can be a combination of different spiritual elements. Forge your own path. The health benefits are the same, no matter which path you take. Nice. Well, seven is movement matters. You almost want to say, duh. (laughs) But... You know, a lot of us schedule time to move, but spend the rest of our days really sedentary. And as you said, Teresa, technology is assisting us in order to becoming more and more sedentary. You know, cars, phones, everything, a lot of the, a lot of our work is sitting. So this has become a huge problem. And in fact, sitting is the new smoking. It has all the risks of smoking and it's uh, critical that we move. Now, I'm not necessarily saying run or even exercise. I'm saying move because this isn't really a matter just of scheduling some exercise. That's a good thing to do. Scheduling movement. That's a good thing to do. But this is about like the blue zones where it's a way of life that we move. We don't always park as close as we can possibly get. We take a few stairs instead of taking the elevator. Movement is a part of our lives, and and everything works better when we move. Everything. We'll hear about it. The brain, the GI tract, the bones are stronger, the muscles are stronger, the heart is stronger. It's like like winning the lottery. Just move, and you're better. You'll even lose weight, I guarantee you, if you start moving more. So that's the tip. Engineer movement into your life. Nice. So my tip is architect the hell out of your brain. Yo, girl. (laughs) Science supports that we have lots of control over our cognitive future. We can enhance our memory, reduce the risk of developing dementia, become more creative, develop supercharged problem-solving skills, and feel more emotionally balanced by trying two things. One, be a lifelong learner. Challenge yourself with new and complex ideas and tasks. You don't have to do them well. You just need to give your brain a mental workout. And two, take time to quiet your mind through mindfulness or meditation. Most people take time to recover after a workout. The same is true for your brain. Know when to give it a rest. So tip eight, architect the hell out of your brain. Okay. Tip number nine is reconstruct Rosetto. And this is about social connections. Rosetto is a town in eastern Pennsylvania, and it was settled by immigrants from 
southern Italy in the late um, 1880s. And for decades, the people of Roseto preserved their traditions and their lifestyles from the old country. And with those traditions came very good health. And in fact, it was reported that their deaths due to heart disease were dramatically lower than the neighboring towns. Now, the people of Rosetta smoked their cigars and fried their meatballs and all of those things. Um, so that wasn't terribly different from the other towns, but what was different um, really protected them. And this is all about social connections, multi-generational, strong community ties. No one was ever alone or lonely. Now, eventually those traditions began to fade and, and not surprisingly, they then began to experience the same rate of heart disease as other towns. But here's what's important. We can reconstruct a bit of Rosetto in our own lives. And how do we do that? Here's the big tip, giving up the need to be right. That comes from Roger. Also show genuine interest in another person, ask really good questions and then really listen to the responses. And of course, using technology to facilitate uh, connection and reconnection. All of those are great tools to have a little bit of Rosetto in our own lives. Okay, I get the last one. And uh, that one's the, the joy killers and the outcome makers. It's about the <laughs> double-edged sword of expectations. You know, Ellen Langer, a researcher at Harvard, has done magnificent research that has shown definitively and she shows in her book, Counterclockwise, that when you expect something, your brain and then your body labor to make that a reality. So this is why positive attitudes, positive thinking, uh, expecting the best uh, works for people. They, they, in fact, the research tells us they live seven and a half years longer than, than you know, the half full people live seven and a half years longer than the half empty people. So this is about attitude, but also what you expect of yourself. When you, you know, like Henry Ford said, if you think you can do it or you think you cannot, you're probably right. And this, and now that used to be just a phrase, but now we have research that supports it and supports it definitively down to the cellular level. This, when you have expectations, positive expectations. It makes things happen within your brain, within your body, and brings them to reality. However, the other side of that is that if you're a Pollyanna about this and have unreasonable expectations, then you're going to be disappointed. You can achieve a lot, but if you don't achieve what you expected, you're going to be bummed out and it's going to be a negative experience. So I think the key here is look at expectations as roadmaps. But realize there will be detours. You're still headed for your goal, but you just have to have to take a little bit different way and accommodate. But expectations are huge. So there we are. And uh, I think that was a nice summary. If I, uh, if I tuned into that, I think that would give uh, me a, a nice look at this. And uh, we're hoping that anyone who does uh, will want to dig deeper. That's right. And if you if you enjoyed this brief summary, um, check out episodes one through 10. That's what we just highlighted. And please rate, review and share with others. And you know, what can they expect after this? Uh, we're not done. We're just beginning this podcast. And so it's our plan, right, gang, to uh, to dig deeper into some of these issues, but also some of the more timely issues that pop up during the during the year. And uh, we're going to jump right on them and give our view. We're going to get a bunch of experts in here to talk about some things that when they know a whole lot more about these things than we do. So I think they should stay tuned. Well, make sure you keep tuning in to Doc Roger and Friends, the bright side of longevity. We hope this podcast is a source of inspiration. If you're ready to dive deeper into these concepts and really apply them in your life, join us over at Master Life. You'll have a personalized experience and lots of support to create your own long, bright future. MyMasterLife.com You've been listening to Dr. Roger and Friends, The Bright Side of Longevity. If you like the show, please rate and review, and be sure to click to follow.